And good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the Digital Drop Podcast. I am Ross Dillon, joined by Andrew Wall and Andrew Perrin. And today, much like yesterday, we are going to be covering some challenges that a lot of experts in the fields of marketing, streaming, whatever it may be. Today, we're covering 22 expert challenges. 22 experts gave their biggest challenges for social media. And we've only got a short amount of time, so I'm just gonna start this off right away. Number one, the lack of sufficient time to discover and create interesting content. We kind of t- tackled this one a little bit yesterday, AWOL. Yeah, that's why it's all about experimentation up front and testing out a bunch of different types of content uh, to find out what the winners are gonna be, like the types of content that are gonna be winners, the topics that are gonna be winners, the formats that are gonna be winners, and then taking like five, three to five of those types of winners and doubling down on those. Uh, If you're constantly in this experimentation phase where you're constantly having to be super creative in 5,000 IQ with your social media content, you aren't gonna get anywhere uh, because it requires too much time, too much energy, and you're gonna end up putting out one or two pieces of will i don't know will it work or will it not content each day and you're going to fail you're going to lose clients and you're going to uh ultimately not grow in the long term perrin what do you think that's something i like to call forced creativity and it never works it never works so when you force a social media manager to constantly have some 5000 iq some 4d 4d chess piece of content multiple times a day having that expectation every day that's impossible like we don't have that type of creativity flowing at all points in times at all hours of the day and if you're forcing it to be a certain amount every day you're actually killing the creativity in that way creativity flows from an openness from a lack of that pressure to a little bit so it's not just about testing new things or having all the highest quality content it's about being adaptable with your social media content and having the flexibility and the freedom to actually be creative. If it's set into something and the expectation is everything's always creative, I think you'll have less creativity overall. Right, you guys pretty much nailed that. Number two, this is actually a really important one that for some reason, I don't understand how this is necessarily an expert struggle because this is kind of social media 101, targeting the right platforms and audience for maximum engagement. Now, we all know that some platforms like Facebook, like Instagram, it's pay to play. You're going to have to pay to get your, you know, to get your content in front of people. So you have to look at platforms like Twitter, like TikTok, if you want to actually get the maximum engagement. Am I correct? Yeah, I mean, if you want free engagement, uh, the only platform, the the platform that has the most free engagement is YouTube uh, by far. Uh, The number two platform that has the most free engagement is going to be TikTok. And number three is going to be LinkedIn. And then basically nothing else compares. Uh, Now, Reddit, in some cases, can have a lot of free engagement. For example, people will go live on Reddit's uh, PAN network, a public access network, live streaming. They'll just play the guitar and get 10,000 concurrent live viewers. But those four platforms, you can get free traction. Uh, Everything else you have to pay, including Instagram. Uh, So people think you can just like post beautiful photos on Instagram and grow right now. No, not really. And uh, every day, Instagram traction just decreases and decreases. So if you don't want to uh, run most of your strategy on YouTube, TikTok, LinkedIn, and Reddit, then you're going to have to have a budget and you're going to have to pay to play. Uh, That's just the way it is. And if you think you can get somebody to hustle and grind and creativity their way into getting traction on these other platforms, um, you're wrong. Hmm. Targeting the right platforms and audience for maximum engagement like that. I don't know. I don't know if I can relate to this one. I feel like that's kind of the easier thing to do as a social media manager. Yeah. Like it's pretty clear what type of audiences are on each platform. It's pretty clear. And maybe I just feel this way because this is something that, you know, we study as a group here. Um, but it's pretty clear, like where you're going to, what you're going to get when you go to TikTok. It's pretty clear what you're going to get when you go to Twitter. Um, it's exceedingly clear when you go to Facebook, what you're going to get and how to target it. I mean, They've got like one of the most robust targeting platforms uh, through Facebook Business Manager. So that being a huge challenge, I would say like maybe that's a challenge for an entry level social media yeah. person. Um, but you know, once you're in the space for a while and you get a feel for it, I don't think it's I don't think that's too much of a challenge, honestly. I didn't no. want to crap on the person, but yeah, I was trying to find some other way to say it. But yeah, I mean, what the right. hell are they talking about? They're a social media professional. 
I don't think so. This article is bogus. Ross, where did you get this article? <laughs> I got it on the internet. Nothing on the internet is bogus. Okay, number three, originality. This is a good one, actually. This is true. Hey, well, is there any such thing as originality on the internet anymore? No. There's no such thing as originality in humanity in any field. Uh, so not music, not film, not art, not writing. None of it's original. Uh, completely original. So everything that we say, everything that we do, everything that humanity is doing today is a combination of things we saw humans do before us, and we're combining them together in a way that we see fit. And that's what we view as originality. So people saying, like, that's not original content, or is my, my content, I need to make more original content, and blah, blah, blah. It's just all a bunch of garbage. Uh, there's no such thing as originality, and stop trying to be original. Uh, just make something that's good. Make something that's valuable to people. Make something that has educational value, tells them about something that's the best, shows them a challenge, uh, you know, it has learning value, has trending value, uh, has all the values that humans care about, and uh, stop thinking about originality. Like, when you start thinking about originality, that's your ego getting in the way, making you think that you're more important or more valuable than you actually are. Uh, shut up. You're one of billions of people on planet Earth, uh, thousands of generations of humans before you. Just shut up about originality. Get out of here. Yeah, I, I don't know if I have a, something great to follow that. That was perfect. I don't um, think there is anything to follow up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, so I've see, I see this uh, happen all the time with creators. And they come into the space, especially when they're new, and they think they have this idea, like, I need to be original. I need to have this huge, amazing idea that no one's done before. No, you don't. You don't do that. Don't. You'll never get started if you're thinking that way. You'll spend forever thinking of some original idea because there isn't one. So you'll never get started. Don't worry about being original. Take what other people have done before you and make it your own. Alter it. Remix it. Twist it. Add to it. Take away from it. Just that's the formula that works. I can see why they had that as a challenge on here. Um, that's mixed on, on this list with lack of design resources, which that is a little bit more relatable as a challenge yeah. from a social media standpoint because the expectation is uh, from a, so, as a social media operator that you're going to come in and you are also your own design house. Like you can just go on Twitter and you can just do all the designs and execute all the content. Realistically, as a social media manager, you have too much to do that you don't get to spend enough time doing designs and you need to have some sort of dedicated design resource to have a good content output. Right. Okay. Number four, ensuring the right sizes for social media graphics. This is just stupid. All you have to do is Google social media what? image. What? <laughs> what? Where did That's you get it. this article, that Ross? What the struggle. fuck is this? Just, just Google just, it. Just Google it. It is that simple. <laughs> it, it doesn't, you don't even have to open a web page. It literally shows you on Google's front page what they are. It's a one step process. That's so dumb. Skipping that crap one. Number five, Karen, <laughs> you just kind of referenced about how there's a lack of time to do certain things. So number five is a good one. Keeping up with the ever-changing world of social media. With the limited time that you have as a social media manager between monitoring, creating, and everything else in between, Parent, how do you actually keep up with the algorithms and current trends, et cetera? I mean, the algorithms, they, they don't change so frequently. And the best way to, to keep up with all of it is to be a part of it, to be practicing on each platform, to be executing some sort of strategy on each platform. That will keep you up to date with it. I mean, that is by far the best way. You can read articles about it, but the articles are slower. I mean, and, and having the right sources, they can be slower. Like there are some social media sites and sources that I will read, but mostly it's just practicing, practicing, practicing. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I don't know. People that say these sorts of things are the kind of people that like clock in to do a nine to five on mm -hmm. being a social media manager. They're like, damn, well, uh, I didn't have time to do research today on social media. It's like, man, you suck. You should be fired. Um, like it, it, your, your day all day long, if you're interested in your job, is to be looking, following every social media platform, consuming content on all of it, doing things like reading articles, sure, uh, releasing content on your personal avenues outside of work, uh, constantly pitching to your the business you're working for that you uh, release content on new platforms and you experiment there. I mean, you should, it, this isn't a challenge. This is like the actually one of the most fun parts about the job, if you're good at the job. 
if you view that as being a challenge, you are in the wrong field because you're viewing being on top of social media trends and social media platforms as work. And if it feels like work, then you need to go find another career because that's not the work part. That's actually the exciting part is being on the cutting edge of communications technology. Right. Okay. So we've only got like uh, 10 minutes left. So I'm going to start skipping the stupid ones if that's okay with you guys. So I'm down. I'm down. No, yeah. I kind of like the stupid ones, but that's fine. Uh, you can, you can skip them. Go, 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 go. Okay. Okay. Number seven, a wall. This is a definitely an a wall question. You've had to deal with this multiple times, aligning social media strategies throughout different departments. Uh, yeah. So th- this is a big issue. This is definitely actually an issue. This is a human being's problem. So if you work for a company or a client or anyone really, uh, even when there's more than one person, they're gonna have different ideas of what they think social media should be like uh, for that organization. And did you know that every single human being on earth is a social media expert because they have a Facebook account? And so everybody thinks that they know what good social media is because they use social media in the same way that they think uh, you know, it's, it's just as absurd as thinking I watch TV. Therefore, I now know how to be an executive producer for a top show. It's that kind of thinking, unfortunately. And all of these people are idiots, but you can't tell them they're idiots because they're probably your boss. So how do you navigate this? So uh, your PR department's going to have different goals than your marketing department. Who's going to have different goals than your CEO? Who's going to have different goals than uh, everybody else in the company? So what you have to do is you have to meet with all of them. You have to let each of them know what the kind of key numbers are that you can focus on on any given platform. Things like followers, things like engagements, things like revenue generated, things like getting replies and comments, and convince them that these numbers that you're telling them are going to contribute toward whatever their personal goal is for social media. And then all you have to do is report on the normal numbers that you report on for socials, right? Engagement, comments, followers. And you go to them and you say, look, we got so much more engagement. And that really helps you with your goal PR because blah, blah, blah. Then you go to the marketing department and be like, we got really good numbers here and that helps you with your goal, blah, blah, blah. You're never going to be able to get everybody in the company to agree on what social media should be because everybody thinks that they're an expert. And ego, when it gets involved in business, it really destroys everything. Pretty much nailed it. Okay. Uh, oh my God. Some of these are just ridiculous. Balancing daily tasks. Is this is, an expert has trouble balancing a day, daily task? Okay. Um, <laughs> probably in the wrong field. Probably in the wrong field there, bud. Um, Man, that was brutal. I mean, it is yeah. hard to balance daily tasks. I agree. It, but that's not like a social media specific problem. That's like no. uh, that's like a human being problem. Like it's hard to do all the things you want to do in life as a human being because of the thing called time. Like I hear you, bro. <laughs> Right. Okay. Uh, Another good one, getting to know your audience. Well, number one, if you're actually engaging with your audience, which is literally like step number one of social media, then you're going to get to know your audience automatically. That's not a challenge. Perrin, here is a great one for you. Limited social media budget. Is there a workaround and how do you approach your boss and say, we're going to get limited results because we have a limited budget? Well, yeah, I I wouldn't say there's a workaround. Um, You can do a lot on social media with a limited amount of money, actually. And uh, most of my experience has been having limited budgets and I've been able to get more in some cases, but you can do a lot with a little. And I think instead of looking at, well, I can't do anything because I don't have any, I don't have a big social media budget, like figure out how to get a lot out of what you have and get the most out of it. And then make it, make it realistic, you know, uh, expectations with your company or your manager or whatever saying, Hey, this is my budget. This is what's possible with my budget. I can't do more than that without a bigger budget. So if you want more numbers, give me more money. But I mean, like I said, especially on Facebook and on Twitter, advertising is so cheap. I mean, most of my budgets were really, really tiny and we could do a ton with it. So, I mean, I don't think a small budget is an issue. Uh, But I thought this was a question about getting to know your audience. Oh, no, I skipped that one because it was stupid. Oh, okay. Got it. So how do you deal with a small budget (laughs) is the question then that we're dealing with. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I think Perrin nailed it there. One thing, and we've talked about this before, and I just want to bring it up again. If you're thinking about working with a company or a client and they want to hire you to do social media and you need to make clear what the budget is going to be for advertising before you take the job. If they tell you, oh, we'll figure it out later, run. If they tell you, um, it's $200 a month, run. 
You need somebody to give you hundreds of dollars per month at least to do your job as a social media manager, uh, preferably at least $1,000 a month if you can get it, depending on the organization, and then you can start to talk about it. Uh, and that budget isn't just for advertising, it's also for the other help that you're gonna need, such as video editing, graphic design, the different platforms you need to subscribe to, et cetera. And so if you're looking at a client, the number one thing you should be looking at isn't your salary, isn't your pay, isn't whether you like them. The number one thing you need to look at is whether they're taking social media seriously. And the biggest indicator of that is, do they have a budget for it? It doesn't matter what they say to your face. It just matters how much money they allocate. I think Perrin's cat or something just fell off his desk. That was pretty <laughs> yeah. awesome. It doesn't matter. He's okay. He went, he went flying. <laughs> oh God! It doesn't matter what they say to your face. It matters how much money they're allocating to it. I hope you understand that. That's the real indication of how much a business cares about something is how much money they're allocating to it, not what they're saying about it. Very good. Okay, number, uh, well, this is 14. We're skipping number 13 because it's another stupid one. Uh, 14, ROI on social media. Is it, should your bosses, should your managers expect any sort of return on investment on social media? So in normal social media posting, like the stuff you see publicly in the feeds on socials. Um, I think like best case scenario, like diamond encrusted trophies for everyone involved is that that breaks even. Uh, that would be like best case scenario for most businesses. There will be some outliers where uh, you know, the stuff that you see in the feeds actually generates uh, positive revenue versus the amount of money you've invested into the personnel behind it but this is incredibly rare. Uh, so the other question is, well, social media, I thought social media makes a lot of people a lot of money. It does. Advertising on social media makes people a lot of money. And so people think it's kind of like this either or thing. So a, a great social media strategy is you have one team, probably your community team, uh, posting stuff into your actual feeds actual tweets, actual Facebook posts, actual Instagram posts, et cetera. And then you have a digital marketing team, maybe the same people or maybe a separate person running advertisements against those accounts so that when people see an advertisement in their feed for your brand or your product or your services, they can click your Facebook page and go check you out and actually see if you're legit. And if you're just running an ad and you don't have a real Facebook page of real content, there's no trust built. Also, you can build trust by posting content into social media feeds, right? Somebody consumes 10, 20, 30, 40 tweets that you've put out on your account. Then when you run an ad against your followers, they're probably more likely to click that ad and buy your product. So think of it like this. Your community team is warming up potential clients and keeping potential clients that you currently have. Your digital marketing team is running ads to convert those uh, convert both of those uh, back into clients if they left or get those new clients closed to become uh, to become new revenue for your business. You have to have both at the same time or either one is ineffective. So you've got to have your organic strategy and your paid strategy working together to get new clients and to retain clients. It's not an either or scenario. So when you're talking about profitability, both of those things have to happen. And that's not just hiring one person to do shit on socials for free. Sorry. Right. Uh, dilemma between choosing between quality and quantity. I feel like we've talked about this a million times. I'm not really sure. Why. Perrin, quality what's the correct matter answer on social? Like quality doesn't matter. I don't know why doesn't. people think this uh, over and over again. Like, yeah, it's great to have good quality and you should strive to get there if you can. But quantity is way better. More content. Like, there's a reason why we're doing this podcast every day. There's a reason why 20 posts a day on Twitter is way better than two. Like, Quality doesn't matter. Look at what look at what is popular on the internet. Memes are really popular. Memes are really inherently low quality. But how dare you say funny. that? Ross Ross posted like tens of thousands of memes. How dare you say that? And guess which ones were successful? <laughs> the lowest quality the ones garbage are probably ones. the most successful. Like <laughs> yeah. the quality doesn't that. matter. Stop thinking that you gotta like reinvent the wheel and you gotta have a polished blockbuster movie for every tweet. You're going to send like one tweet a week. How are you going to grow off that? You're not. So go for quantity, quantity always. It's really, really simple. And I don't understand why that would be a challenge to a social media expert. Also, but can I add this in here for a second? Please. There's no such thing as a social media expert. I don't believe in it because everybody consumes social media. 
And if you're an expert, you're not learning anything anymore because the space changes so much. It's impossible to be an expert at any one given point in time. It changes too rapidly. There is no such thing. So I'm wary of someone who says, I'm a social media expert. No, you're not. You don't know shit. You just told me that you aren't learning anything else about social media, which, and which actually makes you not an expert. So I don't think it's a thing. I don't like to call myself a social media expert. Yeah. And I don't like it when other people say they are. I like that. I, I like, I think it's good to refer to yourself as a social media consultant, a social media manager. Uh, I refer to myself as a social media director. Um, and what that's referring to is your kind of professional skills related to social media, but you're not saying you're a social media guru or any of these other things. Cause that's just, it's just weird and wrong. Uh, and I just don't, I don't, I don't, you can say professional titles. I think that's good, but saying expert, anybody who says they're an expert on something probably isn't an expert. There's also so many ways to do social media that yeah. aren't the way that you do it. Right. Cause it's so personalized and it's so, uh, about each one of us, like, the one way that you know that you think you're an expert in, there's a myriad of hundreds of different ways to do social media that you don't know. So you can't claim you're an expert by just knowing one thing. It doesn't make any sense to me. And it, it really irritates me sometimes. Right. Uh, we're going to post this this entire article. I'll, I'll reply to our tweet with this article since we can't get to all of them. But the most probably the most important one that any social media consultant is going to face. And this is a real issue lack of details from the client. Yeah, I've experienced that before. So clients will tell you, uh, you know, make our socials big. Or they won't even provide you with images or videos or any content at all. They're just like, go social it. Uh, and what they don't realize is that social media like is the communication strategy for your company a lot of the time uh, that people are looking for. Um, and when they don't provide you with details on what they expect, when they don't provide you details on content that already exists in the company, and when they don't provide you any sort of direction of what their vision for socials is, you're basically set up for failure right out the gate. And so this would be something to do in the interview process when you're vetting a client and figuring out whether you wanna work with them is to try to get them to provide you with some of those details up front. And if their answer in the interviews you're talking to them is, well, we're hiring you to, so you can help us figure all of that out, run. I have been in that scenario. Like I can think of like three out the, just off the top of my head where More that happened to not. me in the interview. They're like, Oh, well I'll ask them, what do you, what do you like? What's, what's your vision of social? I'm like, you know, we really don't know. That's why we're hiring you. I'm like, Oh man, no, <laughs> just no, I'm getting out of here. Um, yeah, like that yeah. situation is really, really common. That's like trying to be a developer for a company and then going and talk to the CTO to get hired for a job. And you say as a developer, can you just tell me about your vision for the products you're developing? Like, tell me what you're looking to accomplish here. And they go, well, that's why we're hiring you is to come up with the vision for the product. It's like, what the fuck are you even talking about? Like you can't, <laughs> it's just so crazy. And it's just because it's one of these things where like, if you hear that sort of answer from a client, it's because uh, they have put no thought or effort into thinking about social media and figuring out what they want. And then they don't plan on putting any thought or effort into it later. That's the key thing to take away here. If they haven't thought about it before they decided to hire you, then they're not going to think about it later. And that means you're going to get how much support, guys? Big donut zero get out of there. That's a failed job. You're going to be fired in six months. Or you're going to want to quit in six months. Huge waste of time. Unless you got to get the paycheck and you're desperate for a paycheck, then run. Yep. Pretty much. And also uh, my final thought on this before we close out the show, a lot of, a lot of times when I'm getting recommended people to work with, uh, a lot of people will say, you know, uh, they're way too picky. Don't, don't well, You don't want to work with them. They're way too picky. They're not going to give you the freedom. I'm quite the opposite. The pickier they are, the more I want to work with them because that means they know what they want. And then I can quickly and easily and efficiently adapt my style to fit their needs. Man, that's a really great point. I love that. That's really smart. I've never heard anybody say that before. I want to work with a picky client. Uh, that's cool. If, that, if you like that, that's great. <laughs> I do not. I think, uh, you know, I guess I guess there's a difference between picky and knowing what you want. Uh, and if you're picky, you know what you want, but to like an extreme degree. But you're the type of person that can deal with those. So you need to understand your personality, right? Right. If I've got somebody nitpicking me all day, 
man, I'm going to stress about it. I'm going to need to walk down the block. I just can't handle it. Ross is like, great. They pick on me all day. I like crazy people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Well, I think that's going to wrap up this episode of the Digital Drop Podcast. We have captions live on our podcast. Come on. How, ki- how cool is that? For free. Even, for free, too, right? It's for free. It even, even That's actually pretty cool. Can you share what that is for like everyone? Because this is awesome. Yeah, I might, we, I might do a YouTube video on it, but it's called web, good, good. webcaptioner.com. It is a free web caption based caption platform it will capture your audio can't promise you anything in terms of privacy there guys but it will capture your audio <laughs> and it will turn it into text that you can put below your streams in real time uh, which is cool we're gonna keep testing it and check it out uh, it'll do emojis watch this fire emoji brain emoji car emoji watch this oh no it's struggling well it's in beta it's right now <laughs> it's in beta right now so there you go Oh, there it is. There's the emoji. It took a while. (laughs) Yeah, that took a little bit. It has to like search its database of emojis, it appears. But anyway, it's pretty cool. It also bleeps out your cuss words. Watch this. Fuck, 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 fuck. And it'll it'll bleep those out. Um, So anyway, it's a useful tool. We're going to keep trying it, especially if you're doing live streams that are talk based like right now. Are you doing just uh, just talking or just chilling or direct to camera streams? Uh, it's really hard sometimes for people to turn on audio. So if you can have real-time uh, audio capture or real-time captioning, uh, that can make your live stream more acce- accessible accessible uh, for live viewers uh, for a talk show. There you go. Thought it was pretty cool. Digital Drop Podcast on YouTube. Video replays every single day, Monday through Friday. Just search for Digital Drop Podcast. You'll find us there. And we're on every podcasting platform. If you want to catch the audio version while you're driving in the car, doing a workout, or while you're sleeping at night and you want to have sweet dreams. Guys, have a good day. You too. Thanks, everyone.